This video is about the differences between the two molecules, ATP and ADP. To start things off, um, ATP stands for adenosine triphosphate, which I will spell out for you up here. So it's adenosine, A-D-E-N-O-S-I-N-E, -E, and then triphosphate. ADP, as you can probably guess, stands for adenosine diphosphate. So the main difference here is just the number of phosphates that they have. Uh, to start off, we'll look at a diagram for ATP, and then we'll get into the one for ADP next, uh, sort of like comparing the two of them together. But if we look at this for starters, you'll see that ATP has three parts. It has an adenine, a ribose, and then three phosphate groups that are kind of attached together at the end. This is important because it has like three major regions that you just need to, uh, to be familiar with. The adenine section is more there uh, just for stability. The ribose is a sugar in the middle. And then the three phosphate groups are actually where the energy is. The energy that ATP carries, because remember, that's the whole purpose of ATP. It's, it's the energy carrier of the cell. The energy is actually between these last two phosphate bonds. So when there is an ATP molecule that's used, this last phosphate is actually broken off, and the energy in that bond is what's used to power whatever process it is that ATP is being used for in the cell. So remember, it's used for things like cell transport, for like active transport. Uh, pretty much any time the cell needs energy, it's using ATP for it. Now, if we get into the differences between ATP and ADP, that's where we get to this diagram here. I just want to push this to the back so it gets out of our way. There we go. All right. So now we can cover up that title. Um, if we're looking at the differences between the two, you've got to look up at the top here carefully. We've got ADP on this side and then ATP on the other side. The key difference has to do again with the number of phosphates. You can see adenosine diphosphate only has two of those phosphate groups. Adenosine triphosphate has all three. The way that your book explains this, and I actually really like this comparison, is the idea that ADP is a partially charged battery. So even though it has one of those phosphate groups left that could still be broken off, your body actually doesn't work that way. As soon as uh, it gets down to ADP, that's eventually recharged then through the process of respiration into ATP, adenosine triphosphate. So think of ATP as a fully charged battery. This can be used to power things in the cell. ADP is a partially charged battery that has to be recharged before the cell uses it for anything. So uh, the structure is something that you should be aware of. Again, the idea that there's adenine on this side, the ribose in the middle, and then the three phosphate groups at the end. Just to help you break this down into some simple structure, uh, the first thing that we'll write down under ATP is that this one is fully charged. So this is something that can be used for energy as it currently is in the cell. And this one needs to be charged, or we could say, I guess, uh, that it needs charging. And again, this is part of what happens in the processes of photosynthesis and respiration. Uh, like eventually, what the cell is going to do, the plant cell, is uh, it'll use some of the glucose that's made in photosynthesis at the mitochondria in order to recharge ADP into ATP, so it can be used again. Uh, another thing to put down under this one, ATP, has three phosphates. ADP, of course, only has two. That's the main difference in their name. There's other things that they have in common, which you should be aware of. The idea that they both have the adenine and the ribose in their general structure. Uh, but basically, the, the simple thing, just to understand about these two, is that ADP is partially charged, and the whole point of the two processes we'll be talking about with photosynthesis and respiration is to eventually end up making ATP for the cell, because this powers absolutely everything that's going on. 
So if you feel comfortable with the structure, you could label a simple diagram with the parts on there, and you just understand the difference between ADP and ATP, uh, you should certainly be all set for this one. So as always, uh, thank you for watching, and I will see you in class.